another question here on the acids, bases and pH topic. So number 11 now. So if you want to have a go at this, the link to the questions in the description of the video. Part A, so we've got to write the expression for Ka for this uh, weak acid. So we've got the dissociation there for the weak acid. And obviously Ka is the equilibrium concentration of the product multiplied together, divided by the reactant. And like with a few of these we've seen now, you can't do the abbreviated version. So you can't do the concentration of H plus squared over the concentration of the acid. It has to be the full formulae. Part B, you've got to calculate the pH of the weak acid. So to get the H plus concentration of a weak acid, it's the square root of Kaha. That's how I remember it. So we know the Ka value. We know the concentration of the acid is 0.12. So we just need to do the number crunching. Minus log the H plus concentration when it comes out, and that will give us the pH. So you can see there the pH is coming out at 2.12. First part of C, we've got to explain whether the dissociation of water is exothermic or endothermic. So if we look at the Kw value, so at the higher temperature of 60 degrees C, Kw is higher. So that means that the um, dissociation of water is promoted by a higher temperature. So therefore, the dissociation must be an endothermic reaction. Remember, an increase in temperature favours the endothermic reaction. Next part, we've got to use a calculation to determine whether a pH of 7 at 60 degrees C is neutral, acidic or alkaline. So I've already written up the Kw expression. Obviously, we know Kw for 60 degrees C. We've got the pH, so we can get the H plus concentration from that. So we're going to find the OH minus concentration and compare it to the H plus concentration. So I'll just explain what I've got so far. So obviously Kw rearranges for OH minus to this. So if we put the numbers in, obviously the H plus concentration is 10 to the minus pH. That's where that 10 to the minus 7 comes from. So the OH minus concentration is that. The H plus concentration is 1 times 10 to the minus 7. So you can see that the hydroxide ion concentration is higher. And so the solution must be alkaline. Next part. So we already know that pKa is minus log of Ka. We already know that pH is minus log of H plus concentration. So pKw is going to be minus log of Kw. So the two decimal places... It's 13.03. Finally, this calculation to calculate the pH of this diluted sodium hydroxide solution at 60 degrees C. That's really important. So one of my trusty diagrams first, just to explain what's going on. So they're taking 20 cm cubed of 0.027 moles per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide. It's a strong alkali. And they're adding water to it and making it up to 100 cm cubed. So like with all strong alkali pH calculations, we use the Kw expression. We're going to rearrange for the H plus concentration so we can get the pH. So that becomes Kw over the OH minus ion concentration. We know what Kw is at 60 degrees C. We don't know the OH minus ion concentration. So that's what we need to calculate. So the moles of sodium hydroxide that they're using is going to be the same as the moles of the hydroxide ions in there because of the complete dissociation and the one-to-one -one ratio. So that's concentration times volume. Remember the volume has to be in decimeters cubed. So that's how many moles of hydroxide ions are in there and also in there because they've just been topped up with, with water. Um, the concentration of the hydroxide ions, moles over the volume that they're in. So they're in 100 cm cubed or 0.1 of a decimeter cubed. So that's the OH minus ion concentration. So we just need to plug those numbers into here now. Minus log and we'll get the pH. So the H plus concentration comes out at 1.72 times 7 to the minus 11. Obviously that's moles per decimeter cubed there. And the pH is therefore minus log of that. 10.762 decimal places.